I have, I have the real privilege of knowing Karen well enough and being with her because she's one of the ministerial students that uh, take classes at our center. And it's been an amazing process to watch this unfold, for, to, 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 for her to reach out and to find people that say, yes, you can buy a piece of property, and her not believing them. No experts. Is it, how many of you know that, that's, that you've done that same thing? Yeah, no. Mm -mm. We are what we believe. And if we believe we're limited, nobody can encourage us to live a bigger life. But here's the truth. Spirit does not believe you are limited. Because it's not. And it finds its expression through you. So... Thank you, Michael. We now have a new practice. We should have a dance to it, which is shut up, look up, listen. Ooh. <laughs> Let's try it together, okay? All right. Shut up, look up, listen. Or, I don't know. We got to get the last part. <laughs> 
Let's try it again. Shut up, look up, listen. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> Every spiritual center should have its own dance. <laughs> so you, how many of you watch uh, the, the Full Monty? How many of you see that movie or that play? You know where they're standing in line and they're playing the music in your head and you know they're doing their little moves really silently. So this could be your thing. You're waiting in line and you're going. <laughs> Just to remind yourself. Because when she shut up, and can I just talk about you? Because I know you well enough. When she shut up with her, I can't possibly do this. And she'd look to God and she listened. She'd get her next thing to do. And the next thing to do and the next thing to do and the next thing to do. Which is part of what I want to talk about with this thing called ancient wisdom. Which can also be called a perennial philosophy or perennial wisdom. If you want to Google perennial wisdom, it's actually a, a, or perennial philosophy, it's a branch of philosophy which actually takes ideas from many philosophies, sees what's common about them, and then presents them as something that's been called the golden thread. And it is the basis for what we teach. Ernest Holmes said, I haven't come up with anything new. I'm just synthesizing what's out there and applying it to human life to your life now, so you can have a better life now, not a better life later. Why not now? <laughs> Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is now, meaning the realm of power is yours now. So um, great world religions have been synthesized by this wonderful uh, rabbi, Rabbi Shapiro, and he came up with what we might call um, the reason why we must study perennial wisdom or per uh, perennial philosophy. And this is what he says about that. <clears throat> perennial wisdom has one simple idea. That is that when you know the truth, the truth shall set you free. So if you feel bound by your conditions, by what your husband did, because you were bankrupt, because you have no money now, you're not telling the truth. You're not living in the truth because you're not free. How many of you have some area of your life where you're not free? I should see a few hands. <laughs> if you if you look into the reason why you're not free, you will find the lie. Because the truth will set you free. When I'm feeling bound up and incapable of doing something, I'm telling myself a lie. Now, sometimes I decide to keep the lie. Like, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I almost blabbed. Never mind. <laughs> okay. Shut up. Look up. Listen to yourself, Kathy Ann. Anyway, <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love this. And, and could we have music next time? We, you know, a, a rumba, a rumba maybe? Uh, tango? Uh, should, we, should, we should figure out what kind of music would go best with. Well, uh, country and western? Uh, okay, just figure it out, you guys. <laughs> I, I'm not the f musical people. You figure out the way to do this. Anyway, so get, getting back to perennial wisdom. This is what uh, Rabbi Shapiro co continued to say. When you know the truth, the truth shall set you free. The truth we are talking about, perennial wisdom, occurs in every civilization throughout recorded history. And wis it is wisdom because it reveals the true nature of life and how to best live it. What perennial wisdom frees you from is the illusion of otherness that fuels the sense of fear and alienation that drives so much of our ego-centered lives. I how it drives ego-centered lives. People who are doing unskilled behavior don't know that they are one with everything. Because if they knew they were one with everything, they wouldn't do that to themselves. Does that make sense? So do you understand why perennial wisdom, it needs to make a comeback? 
so that we can heal this sense of separation, isolation that causes fear and unskilled behavior, he goes on to say, in the context of perennial wisdom, truth is that which leads us beyond alienation and isolation to integration and unity. It is that which leads us beyond fear to love, beyond exploitation of others to justice for all, beyond violence and war to cooperation and peace. That sounds good to me. Now here's, here's what is the basis or the, the main thoughts in perennial wisdom. The first one is, is that all life arises in and is an expression of a non-dual infinite life that is called by many names. Ultimate reality, God, the Tao, Mother, Allah, Jehovah, Brahma, Great Spirit, uh, Harvey, whatever. <laughs> Meaning it doesn't care what you call it. Have Father, Mother, God, Holy Spirit, whatever appeals to you. You can, now this is the second most important thing. So one is that there's a one. The second one that in this perennial philosophy is that you, I, we, contain two ways of knowing the world. A greater knowing called Atman, soul, self, spirit, or mind, all capitalized, along with a host of other names. So all this, so this like divine part of ourself that intuitively knows each finite life is in a unique manifestation of the infinite life. And then there's a lesser way of knowing things, which is called the self, not capitalized, ego, uh, Kabir, whatever that is, and the like. So there's, so there's like our big self and our little self. How many of you know you have a big self and a little self? How many of you felt it? Sometimes you just, you, you have this knowing, and, and when you're coming from that place, it's clean. It's powerful, it's peaceful. It seems to be so inclusive and embracing. And then there's the other self. What about me? What about me? I couldn't possibly do that. It'd be impossible. He hates it. <laughs> How many of you know that part too? <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me what to think. I am too limited. <sighs> Perennial philosophy says that human beings are always operating out of one of the two. The awakened self, capital S, and knowing the interconnectedness of life is in, is in our best interest for ourselves and for all beings. That's the third idea. And the fourth idea is awakening yourself, capital S, and living from this authentic self is the highest goal you can set for yourself because, as Jesus would say, seek ye first the kingdom, the realm of power within and all else is given, not only to yourself, but to everyone else. See, her, <laughs> her, I know her name, Karen. Karen's good is good for her, but it's also good for a whole lot of animals that are gonna be in a safe sanctuary. If you really listen to your higher self, that which you want to do is not just good for you, it's usually good for a lot of others around you, wh whether they are human or some other expression of life or the planet itself. God's good is a big good. And because you open up to a big good, you also have to open up to a lot of support. And you know you're supported as you move forward, and that's prosperity. See, whether she knew it or not, Karen was prospered all the way because she moved forward, hopefully. She would not believe, and then she'd believe, and she'd not believe, and then she'd believe. I, I, I mean, watched her, her income, what was it, triple? I mean, my goodness, her income went skyrocketing. She found a way to pay for her ministerial school. I mean, stuff's happening. And it's amazing, and it's, I believe it's because she wants to do a big thing, and so the universe says, gotta fill in that big space. So when we go, wait, it's just about me, you can't take much blessing from the universe. 
kind of go like this. Get small. Get your little, get your little golem self going. <laughs> or is it golem? Golem. Oh, well, whatever. Don't argue with me. Because <laughs> I'm in my small self now. This is not receptive. This is receptive. Thinking large is receptive, and you become a vehicle through which something can flow. You know, just take a moment. I, this is unscripted, but sometimes you don't even have to look up to listen. But take a deep, deep breath. And allow yourself to stay, stay centered on this capital S self that you are, the Atman, the God within. And if you really check in there, it desires to, to benefit the world in some way. It, it has a, whether it is taking care of your children or other children or animals or the neighborhood, there is a desire to do something. But unfortunately, the smaller self goes, oh, I don't think so. So we're always into this, expansion, contraction, expansion, contraction. And the goal is to stay expansive and letting something large live through us and do something through us. Now, I want to share some more ideas from the perennial philosophy and how that will help you prosper. And the first idea is, is that if you listen to your intention, if you listen to your heart, the way will be made known for you to move towards that intention. And it's interesting that uh, they don't talk about this much, but what we now call Christians, what we might call for the first hundred years, what we now call Christians, they didn't call themselves Christians. They called themselves followers of the way. That's what they called them. The way. They're just, they're just, they just knew the way. Uh, and they wanted to follow the way. What's Taoism called? The way. Tao means the way, the way of change, the way of life. So Jesus was a Taoist. You can laugh. <laughs> but maybe. And the thing of it is, is the way, the way of wisdom, the way of you allowing yourself to know the right path, to know the right thing will be revealed to you. And every step will 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 become clear and then every step will become clear and then every step will become clear. And it's got to be unique and uniquely yours. I think the problem with things called prosperity is that people have tried to share their way and they package their way and their way may not be your way. And so if you try to fit into somebody else's way, it doesn't feel right and it doesn't work. It, it, it's got to be right for you. Karen's Unfoldment was perfectly right for her, not only for her to have the manifestation of a piece of property in which she could bless animals, but also it was her growth all the way around, all the way through, which is wonderful. <sighs> teachings about prosperity should be more teachings about shut up, look up, and listen. Because if spirit gives you a dream, it will also provide the means to that dream. If we listen, the way will become clear if we listen. Thank you, Michael, for listening this morning and helping me with this talk. The second thing is, is that the way must lead you to know your own spiritual worthiness. Capital S, self-worth. Someone was here for service, and in their sharing about the good news, they said that they were in the Beyond Limits class in West Seattle, and they said, I've had a healing. I now know I'm enough. I now know I'm enough. Because the way will be a revelation of your own ability to accept 
that which the universe wants to give to us. And it's, that is incredibly important. Now, this is interesting. Emerson said this. He said that you are born to be rich or inevitably to grow rich by the use of your faculties. Now, by rich, what he meant was the ability to do what you needed to do when you needed to do it. So we, uh, this, this prosperity walk, this, this way of a uh, perennial philosophy is about discovering your own worth so you don't have to have a great financial net worth. You have to have an internal net worth. You have to see your own worthiness, your own ability to handle what comes before you and to follow your dreams. In the Gospel according to Thomas, it was written that, oh, and I, well, I could just, you know, I would absolutely love to just make this up, but let's try not doing that for a change. Because um, <laughs> I, I, I do love that. One of the things he said is that when you, when you give rise to what is within you, what is within you will save you. And then he said... Uh, something that is absolutely, lo well, then I'll just make it up. Uh, he, he said that, that uh, if you discover who you are, you will discover that you are an expression of the universe. And if you don't discover that, you will live in poverty. In fact, you will be that poverty. So this whole thing, this whole way of prosperity is not just to have a farm and not just to have the ability to pay for the farm. It's really the ability to find out who you are and that this is just the natural outcome of it. The natural outcome of knowing who you are is to be able to live the life that your, your heart calls you to live. Now to do that, and this is important, you probably will need a practice because I can say you are enough, and I can say you can have self-worth. How many of you know that you could have more self-worth? I mean, not that you don't have it, but you could have more. Who, who knows they could have more self-worth? Great. It's one thing to know that. It's another thing to have that. That's one of the things that was so frustrating for me when I first got into this perennial philosophy or this new thought. They'd say, consciousness is cause. It's all consciousness. And they'd go oh, this really sucks. Because I know it's all consciousness. Now what? How do you change consciousness? I mean, it's not like you can take it off the shelf and dust it. It's not like you can light a fire under it. Under it. It's, what do you do with this nebulous thing called consciousness? That's why I love Emma Curtis Hopkins, because she just tells you to do something. Others want you to understand. She doesn't care if you understand. She just says, do this. Do this and eventually you'll understand. And if you don't do this, then fine. <laughs> don't develop your consciousness. So I'm going to give you a practice for developing consciousness to know that you, are, that, that you can have the life that you want. It will still actually develop self-worth. Now, it's not going to make sense that it develops self-worth, but it really does. And here, is it, here it is. I want you to say, there's a good for me and I ought to have it. <laughs> oh, that was so sweet. How many of you, how many of you just saying it made you kind of nauseous? <laughs> Thank you. How many want to join this person by telling the truth? Just, I don't want to say that there's a good for me and I ought to have it. Well, there's only five. There was up to 10 for service, so that's really good. Oh, you're still, oh no, we haven't healed you yet. Oh. There's a good for you, me and I ought to have it. What it, mean, if, what it means is there's a good for me, I ought to have this, and it's not based on anything I did. It's not based on who, who my parents were. It's not based on the neighborhood I live in. It's not based on what I produced last week. It's not based on what my friends think of me. It's not based on who I voted for last November. It's not based on what I think of them now. I mean... <sighs> It's not based on anything. There's just a good for me and I ought to have it. And the reason I ought to have it is just because I exist. I ought to have it because I exist. There's good for me and I ought to have it. 
Now let's go. One, two, three. There's a good for me and I ought to have it. Let's say it again. There's a good for me and I ought to have it. We are going to go on a prosperity path for this month. And this is your exercise all week. Because I, I can give you all sorts of tools, but if you don't think you deserve the best, they will, these, these ideas will just fly by. And even if you try them, they won't work. How many of you have done the exact same thing that somebody else did and it still didn't work? How many of you say, well, what did you say? How'd you do that? And they tell you and you do it and it doesn't work. It didn't work because you didn't believe you should have it. We shift this and everything else is a piece of cake. Are you ready? Yes. There's a good for me and I ought to have it. And then you add, and my good is. And you just fill in the blank. For Karen is, and my good is that my sale closes on time. Uh, yeah, early. <laughs> Keys in my hand. <laughs> and then, then add this one thing. And my good comes to me in holy and elegant ways. Why? Because some of you will think, well, if I have my good, then does it take from somebody else? Oh. So you believe the universe is a piece of pie. And if you get your piece, nobody else will. There's a good for you and you ought to have it. And it's not based on anything except you exist. And the universe owes you a living. The universe owes you a living. Now, the world doesn't. What the world, what you owe the world, your gifts. But the universe owes you a living because you were created. And what the thing I love about Hinduism is that God not only creates, it sustains. So it's like, okay, Vishnu, bring it on. Sustain me. Snap, snap. I can't snap very well, so I just say it. Third thing from this perennial philosophy and how to apply that to your prosperity is that you will be inspired along the way by people who have proven how to live prosper prosperously using spiritual principles. If you decide to prosper using perennial philosophy that there's all one and I can intuitively connect with that one and know everything I need to know. It's in every one of us to be free. Open your eyes, open your heart and see. It is in every one of us to know everything we need to know. It is always in us and we can use that information to move forward joyfully and hopefully and prospering, prosperously. We can do that and along the way we will be inspired by others who are doing it. Just as Karen was inspired by prayer partners and sanghas and people that said, yes, you can. Now you'll also be tempted. Ooh. <laughs> you will be tempted by those people who want to give you a gimmick or an easy way. And it is okay. Many people have prospered through their own intelligence and their own cunning, and then they've always got to keep it up. So they're never letting it happen. They're always making it happen. And when you make it happen and make it happen and make it happen, it is tiring. So yes, you can go that way. Or you can see what happens when you shut up, look up, and listen. And then we'll add one. Oh, next step. It's not a three-step, it's a four-step. And then act. What you hear, act on it. Because when Karen would listen, she had to act. Michael listened this morning and he had to speak about it. I was, uh, as I was doing this talk last night, I was thinking about my uh, last few years in ministerial school. And at that time, I worked for 
uh, what was then AT&T, but AT&T was all the phone companies. Remember before they split up? So I guess I was, I'd say the phone company, and then there was just one phone company. Oh, man. That was a long time ago, wasn't it? And I had this wonderful privilege. Oh, jeez, this is, you pray, dear God, I love the idea of being an account executive. It sounds so exciting. And so I prayed and got it, and then I went, oh, dear God, what am I doing? I'm selling large phone systems, and I really don't care about large phone systems. The people I worked with were doing things like reading the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> Rah! But anyway, I was, that was my livelihood, and to keep my job, I had to sell. And it was amazing, I did, I sold, I sold well. And people would ask me, how is it that you sold this thing? This big, peep, this big phone system to this company. I'd say, well, to tell you the truth, I just tell them the truth. We cost a lot more. And it's probably more than you need in your company. Got more bells and whistles than you'll ever use. But the other companies have only been around because that's when they started to have new phone companies. They, only, they haven't been around very long. I'm not sure that they'll be around very long. So you can gamble on them or you can go with us at twice as much. And I sold like crazy because I trusted that God was going to bring me face to face with a person who wanted our overpriced phone systems for some reason that I can't come fathom. Does that make sense? Spirit knows how to fulfill itself through you. Because I had a, it wasn't about selling phones, it was about getting through ministerial school so that I could teach what I had proven in my life to others. The reason that I do this every fall, this program, is that Emma Curtis Hopkins says, you will not have permanent prosperity, you will not have hot, sizzling prosperity unless you can teach it to others. You must share that which you know. So I'm gonna share everything I know but the first thing is, you've got to understand you're worth it just because you exist. There's a good for you, and you really ought to have it. Any questions? <laughs> Come forward. Any resistance? That's what I should say. Any resistance to what's been said? Oh, come on over here. Come on. Oh, good. I love no resistance. Let's hear it for yay. Wait, because these people also want to know. That's why I did. I just wanted to know what the last part was. You said my good comes to me because. Because I exist. <laughs> that was easy. Oh, I love you. And the reason is it comes to you because you exist. The universe owes you a living. It owes you. It owes you everything to prosper. If we look at the universe and we look at nature, everything does well until human beings get involved. <laughs> so don't let yourself and let other human beings get involved in your prospering. So be like that which is normal and natural, which is to thrive and give your gift. So I want to sh just share it this way because you're up here and I want to just say this. Too many people see prosperity as having. True prosperity is knowing that you are that which is produces the goods. So you're no longer collecting apples. You are the tree that produces the apples. And when you know that, you don't, you, you know that it's not just for you, you produce for a lot of people. Karen's sanctuary for animals will serve a lot of people. And you are called to serve a lot of people. We all are. We're called to serve. And it may not be through service like feeding them. It might just be that we show up and we're positive when somebody's lost their faith. And we're supported in everything that we give out. And the more we give out, the more we'll have. Did I answer more than you ever wanted to know? <laughs> 
thank you. <laughs> thank you for asking. Never give a woman with a, with a microphone a stand to stand on. <laughs> they just get going crazy. Any other qu quick question? All right. There's a good for you and you ought to have it. And that's my prayer. And I give thanks that the Holy Spirit, which is the only teacher that really is, the only teacher, and everyone else is just a vehicle for that inner teacher. I speak my word that the Holy Spirit is now working in the consciousness of every person here, loosening us up so that we can expand into knowing that there is indeed a good for us and we ought to have it because we are the beloved of the universe. We are here on purpose. God so loved the idea of us that we became to be and it will now sustain us in the unfolding of our life promise. And so it is. <laughs>